babies, hey babies, hey babies. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. What's up, everybody? How are we doing today? I'm good. How are you doing? <sighs> Man, <laughs> I've had I've had like a 24, 48 hour. It's, what is it? It's not even 48 hours. But a couple of um, <laughs> yeah, time is uh time has gone very slowly here over the last 36 hours or so. Um, I'm very popular, very, very, very <laughs> popular on the internet for the last uh, 24 hours. So that's been new. That's been a new one for me. You went viral. Uh, you, you went viral. So there you go. For good reasons. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> <Thank Yes. God. laughs> go the other way. Yeah, I'm still, uh, still can't believe it happened. Honestly, like had, uh, let's see, I went on with Scott. I went on with Scott yesterday. Okay. Uh, I'm going on with some others today and, um, it was funny. I, it just didn't occur to me that Scott wanted to talk to me about me. That was like, that's, oh. <laughs> it was weird. Like I, I, uh, he, he's like, Hey, can you come on? And I'm like, yeah, he wants to talk about the game. And then he just asked me a million questions about me. And I was like, Oh, and I like texted him after I go, I don't know if you could tell, but I'm just not comfortable talking about myself. <laughs> but I did I thought you just want to talk about the team. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's how it works. Like, <laughs> I guess. All right. Should we look at it? Break it down? You want to break it down? Everybody sure. else is looking at it. Might as well. You know, here I go, not liking talking about me. But at this point, <laughs> this one is, this is a new one. All right. Hold, please. Let's put this up. Let's see what we got. You want to hear it or you just want to see it? What should we do here? Uh, yeah, I think you hear it. Yeah, yeah. You hear, hear it. it. All right. Let's take yeah, a yeah. listening in. All right. One more time, everybody. For the eight millionth time, here's the Hail Mary call. Bears at eight deep. Four with the goal line. They bring three. Daniel's backing up. He's just going to have to let one fly. Goes to the right side. Oh, steps cool. away from the defender. Gives himself some time. Now steps up. Fires. Heads towards the end zone. It is. Oh, 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 Okay, <laughs> there we go. So uh, everybody's favorite part seems to be that London nearly threw me out of the booth. That like that's that seems to be the part everybody likes the most. That seems to be yeah the one that gets the most traction because he does give you a thump there, and uh, you you yes. do move quite a bit. So I think uh, yeah, ever, everyone was a little worried, and it's funny like you're you're tall. London though is bigger, and there was, so I think everyone got yeah. worried where it was like they, they see this football player about to knock you out essentially. Uh, but yeah. that was not going to happen. I knew that. Uh, here goes. <laughs> there it is. All right, yeah. there's yeah. There's, there's the shove nearly out of the booth. Um, you know, it's funny. Like when I walked downstairs into the locker room, so um, you know, all the media is waiting to get into the locker room. You know, they hold everybody out for however long. Like it's like 10 minutes or something like that, what they call like a cooling down period. In this case, it was a little bit different, not a cooling down period. And I like I got, you know, we're at a different part. Like we have to wait for an elevator to get down. So everybody was lined up by the time we got down there and everybody's eyes, you know, were bugging out of their head. And somebody said to me, he goes, what was your call? And I looked at him and I went, I don't remember. Like I, don't, <laughs> I didn't, didn't remember what I said. Like I'm like, I don't know. Like it just... I don't know. Like, I had no idea. And then someone else said, like, what's the video going to look like? And I go, I have no idea. I'm like, I was so lost in the moment. I don't remember what I said. I don't remember what happened. Like, I, I'm looking at this now. I don't remember London pushing me. Like, I don't. I have no <laughs> recollection of it whatsoever. I also don't remember him dancing like that. I don't remember any of it. I was just lost it. I was in the moment. It was incredible. Yeah. No, uh, that's a uh, that's a classic blackout. That's exactly what happened. What? The blackout. <laughs> Which yeah, I think is, is uh, what happened know. at that party last night. I'm not sure, but it was great. It was great. 
Yeah, whatever it was. I didn't embarrass myself. That's what's important. No, I did. I don't think I did. I, that's right. I did, then I said yesterday because I hadn't seen it. I had to go tape the booth review. You're going to go hear a segment of that with London um, later on in this show. <laughs> and, um, and I walked up to Jason Johnson, who's our producer with the Commanders, because he gets the booth camera thing. And I go, have you seen it yet? And he goes, yeah. And I go, am I going to be embarrassed? <laughs> and he goes, no, not at all. And I went, are you sure about that? Because I don't remember what I did. It's one of the, the this is the hangover. Like, did I lose a tooth? Did, did I hang out with Mike Tyson with a lion? Did I take off all my clothes and jump on a table? It Face tattoo. Been, anything, right. Anything could happen. Like anything. I don't know what we're going to see on that video. I have no idea. <laughs> No, I mean, my, I think, you know, just as a soft spot for all the producers, CJ's just two hands up in the air yes. holding there was uh, also classic because he didn't even know what to do either, I think. <laughs> so it's pretty yes, wild. Every, yeah. every angle, every angle from every person is yeah. amazing. The other part, too, that I love in this video is, yes, everyone's commenting on London uh, pushing you and what you're doing and everything. I love it that half the half the uh, video is the fans too. Yes. So you see, you also see a Bears fan there that is just dejected essentially when it happens with all the Washington fans. It was fantastic. Yeah. Someone fantastic. pointed out to me there was like some eight year old kid there, like or looked like an eight year old kid there going nuts. Like so, they're a fan for life. You know. Yes. <laughs> like yeah. you went to this, you're done. You're never rooting for anybody else ever again. How could you possibly? Like this is That's it. Right. Right. London no. also here. This is the moment where London does look like an eight-year-old child. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, where he's hopping around. Yes, that's pretty wild. It is. It is pretty wild. I, I got, was, as you might imagine, I got a lot of uh, a lot of texts and uh, and messages over the last twenty-four hours, and I appreciate all of it. It's been great. I mean, I never envisioned anything like that ever happening with anything you know that I've done. So it was really it was really cool, and most of it's been extremely positive. Like when. Barstool calls you epic. I was like, yes. I was like, I win today. I was like, yes. No, I mean, it, it was really funny too. There was, uh, I think it it was one of the accounts that kind of reposted on Instagram. And I guess what happens, I think it's Mad Dog that will go through some local calls and he'll tear yeah. them apart because oh. like, if, the, if you don't lay out for the play-by-play -play guy or whatever. And so someone basically was like, oh, Mad Dog's going to have a field day with this one because you guys basically just are screaming at each other after the ball is caught. And all the comments were like, shut up. This is how local radio should be. Like, this is what the home call should be. And that, that's what I like. I, I think you guys epitomize what everyone wants to hear when a call like that actually happens. I mean, not that I want to get into like the mechanics of play by play, but like in general, you don't want that to happen. But in this case, it's this is what everybody was feeling. No, oh, yeah, that's. Time. This no, is what everybody was feeling. Nobody should be feel like, oh, I need to keep my voice shut here for me. No, that's never literally happened before. It was unbelievable to see it be part of it. You'd never think you're going to see something like that ever. I, I did not prepare for that. I didn't, I didn't have lines prepared for a Hail Mary. Like I never, ever, ever thought I would see something like that. But when they made the play to McLaurin, I went, oh man, they got a shot at it. Like they had a real shot at it, a real shot. And then. I saw a clip from Get Up today where they went off on the Bears about everything they literally did wrong and all the explanations they keep making for themselves. Like Matt Eberflus apparently said it was no big deal that Terry McLaurin made the 15-yard catch that set up the opportunity. And they're like apoplectic. Rex Ryan is sitting there going like, are you kidding right now? Like, like you, he can't throw the ball 70 yards, but he might be able to throw it 50. Like, what, what do you mean it doesn't matter? Or... The cornerback is sitting there, you know, not paying attention, messing with the fans. And they're like, you have timeouts. Like you didn't, you didn't see that. I didn't see it either, honestly, but like you yeah. didn't see it. You didn't call a timeout. You didn't get everybody on the same page. Then there's like, and I saw this on the field at the time they brought three, which I thought was a mistake, but like, whatever, that's what they decided to do. A fourth person was spying him. Like, where's he running? Yeah. That, that Perfect. was you. You want him to run? Of course, you want him to run. <laughs> Mister Bad Ribs over there is going to run sixty yards. No, he's not. Like, what are you talking about? Like, what? Why would you spy him? Either that blitz was... or blitz him or, or bring him or put him on the goal line. What, what are you doing? That was the one that I didn't notice until yesterday when people started pointing it out, and I was like, "Oh, that's the worst defender." Like whatever on the trash talking that guy still touched the ball at the end of the day. Like that's so to me, that one didn't, not it in a good way. <laughs> no, I know a hundred percent, hundred percent. But like, 
he got he was late to the play and still batted the ball. Not that it was a good bat. But then I looked at that one where I was like, yeah, what are you doing spying on Jaden? He was not going to run the ball. You you either put in another DB or I don't know. I was thinking this yesterday too. You have three really good wide receivers on your team. You didn't even want to do that play where you throw a wide receiver back there to try to also bat it down or pick it off. Like, yeah, the 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 awareness on that last play epitomized what that team is. And I told you this yesterday. I think Ibraflus, he's playing himself out of a job because I don't see the sharpness from him that you should with the head coach. Well, I mean, uh, we started talking about this on your show yesterday, and it really – because of what happened and the way it happened, it was hard to kind of get into the details of the game outside of that, you know? But after really thinking about it, and I'm telling you, this team punked themselves. Like, I I just got an overwhelming sense of, in thinking back on it, that they were insecure and they felt like they had something to prove. And they wanted to do it in a certain way to send a message. And at every turn, it backfired on them. Like, literally every turn. Like, in the first half, they brought out this formation where they had, like, four wide receivers, but one would be Cole Komet and one would be DeAndre Swift. And they would line them up inside the numbers. And every time they did it, Caleb was going to make a call out of it and move the alignments around. And they must have done this five or six times. And they ran the play clock down every time. And that play, whatever they called out of it, never worked. None of it. The whole storyline about them coming into the game was after the first few weeks, they had asked to simplify things a little bit because their passing game was awful. He was completing like 50 something percent of his throws. He had four interceptions. He had a game where he threw the ball 52 times. Like they had lost their running game. Swift was non-existent. Komet was non-existent and they stripped it down and they simplified it. And when we started talking about preparing for the game, I'm like, they're a very different offense now. Like, Swift gets a lot of carries. He's averaging 100 and something yard, 130 something yards a game. It's like number two in the NFL over this period of time. Komet and Williams are the one connection they have going, but it's all underneath. Very little of it is down the field with an exception of one really nice design play in London that they scored a touchdown on. And I'm like, the problem they have is they have all these really great receivers, but there's no connection with them yet. None. Like there's just no downfield passing game for them. And it was almost as if they outfooled themselves like they put all this on Caleb they wanted it was almost as if Caleb it felt like he told the offensive coordinator let me run the show because I want to show everybody what I'm capable of it's like the matchup got to him is what it felt like to me and I, I mean I wouldn't know until we talked to their offensive coordinator or their coach and they'll never admit this but it felt like they got away from actually what was working for them to try to make a point and it backfired on them, like big time. Like that was one thing that backfired on them big time. One of the things that I was reading about was how their red zone struggles had been happening like early on in the season and that they had gone to this, you know, backup center to be the fullback. And that like that led to that goal line play too, where they got too cute with it of, oh, here's my new wrinkle and I'm going to hand it off to him. And everybody was like, how are you? Why are you putting the wrinkle on the wrinkle? Like you're out thinking yourself. There's there's yes. no reason for you to to do this. And as you said, they were running the ball perfectly fine, and you even screwed that up somehow. Like like that's what was blowing my mind. I it, I don't know. It was like watching a a former Washington team. To be honest with you, like wait, yes. what? Like you didn't just simplify this. All you had to do was do the simple thing, and you were gonna beat us, and you didn't, and it came back to no. bite you anyways. Then they get into the second, it's 12 to seven when they called a handoff on a third and goal to a tackle. Right. That better work guys. Like the hail Mary thing is getting all the attention, but how they didn't have the lead before that, the way they were running the ball in the goal line to, uh, okay, I'll hear you out on. It was just, just like, you know, that's the exchange, but it was an exchange with a tackle. Like, you called that in the fourth. That's what you called in the fourth quarter. Like again, you guys wanted to win a certain way. You wanted to punk Washington. Like Caleb wanted to show I'm the best quarterback in the draft. I'll show you. And at the end of three quarters, he was three for 11 for 33 yards getting caught up in all this nonsense with all this, you know, like, what do you think? We're stupid. Like all this nonsense of how you're lining people up and moving them around and running down the play clock and none of it works. When you have this moment, you try to hand it off to a tackle because you want to win a certain way. At the end of the game, you're leading any 
way and you're barking like if they don't make the playoffs there's gonna be like you're gonna look back at that game and go you guys punked yourselves like all in the name of trying like not doing a buttoned up operation just punked yourselves and this team hasn't fallen into that they lost lost a game, a tough game to Baltimore and they were disappointed they lost. And I thought not unlike the Washington Chicago game where I'm like the right team won because they dominated them. Baltimore dominated Washington that day, but it was close, but Washington never unraveled. Never. They never tried to do crazy stuff. They never unraveled. Like they were way, way more disciplined in it for each other. Chicago, good luck with that because what you presented on the field, that's not winning football. And if you really think about the whole game on the whole, you may think you lost on a Hail Mary and that's terrible and like, oh, that's just really unlucky. But almost at every other point in the game, one, you were statistically dominated. When you had these key moments, you did crazy things that made no sense. And so good luck with all of that out there. No, this is the game. I think I said it yesterday too. You, you look at Eberflus and you just think, you, you might not be bad enough to get fired, but this is the game that I see that you should probably be gone because I don't see yourself elevating your team at this point. Like, you have the roster for this offense to look good. You have a defense to make this look good, and you just did dumb things on both sides of the ball to lose this game for you. And honestly, what happened was the commanders snatched the victory back because – they should have won this game with the way that the Bears were playing. And, of course, it was the Bears, as your Chiron says there. They punked themselves. They deserved every every bit of how this game ended. I agree. Like, I, I just – the more I think about it, I'm like I, – I get it. Like, it's all about this one thing. And they mishandled that, like, in so many yes. ways. They mishandled the play before. They mishandled that. Like, why – the spy is my favorite part of the whole thing. Spying him to do what exactly? Right. To do what? You want him to run. What are you talking about? Like, of course you want him to run. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, I don't care who your quarterback is. You get a Michael Vick. Go ahead. Like, try to run 75 yards when we have nine guys standing at the goal line. Good luck with that. I'm actually more shocked that that player didn't deviate from the plan. Like, he didn't just decide to rush or go running towards the goal line. Like the fact he actually settled in the middle of the field is mind blowing that he didn't just decide to do it. So yeah, ridiculous. I got to see who do they play next? I got to see who they play next because that th- their whole season is next week. Now I know they have, they the whole play. Divisional. Okay. They play at the Cardinals. Okay. All right. So they got at Cardinals home Patriots. They should That's- win both of those. They should, and then look at who's after that, though. I mean, it's it's all their divisional games and, like, one game thrown in or something. Packers, Vikings, Lions, Niners, Vikings, Lions, Seahawks, Packers. It's ridiculous. Bye. Yeah. See you next year. Right. Yeah. I'll call this now off that. They're not making the playoffs. Their division's too hard, so – I mean, they're not, they weren't making, they weren't making it through winning the division anyway, because their division's too hard. That's either going to be Detroit or Green Bay, probably. And Minnesota is good. So like they weren't going to win the division, but they could, I'll buy them as a playoff team. I think their defense is legitimate. I think their offensive weapons are really good. If it gets better and it comes around and they get a downfield passing game, watch out. But I'll go back to what I said on Friday about them. I said, they're going to be really dangerous next year. If they get their, you know what together. Because they don't have it right now. And that schedule, they lose to Arizona next week. It's over. They beat Arizona and New England. They got a puncher's chance. Right, because division games are division games. You, you, you don't know what could happen there. Like, right. They could go 500. Well, then you split with them and you get to 9 or 10. Exactly. You split with them and you get to 9 or 10. Right, but like, I, like I've said to you now, how Bears fans were discounting Jaden Daniels of, oh, you guys haven't played anyone yet. I'm looking at them going, I'm sorry, the Panthers and Jags are how your offense fixed yourself? Like, Get out of here with that now. Good luck against your own the division. Titans? Yeah, the Titans too. Yeah, exactly. And you all know you shouldn't have won that game. Yeah, your offense sucked that game. <laughs> yes. All right. Oh, man. What a day. Bear, Chicago's imploding, and I'm a superstar. How about that? <laughs> what do you know? All right, we'll be right back. Uh, if you're listening to the radio show or the podcast, you will hear a segment from the Booth Review me and London Fletcher day after the Hail Mary, we, we kind of share our memories of that. 
And if you're watching on YouTube, we're going to talk about other things next. Very much to show you, Span 630 the Sports Capital. All right, welcome back. Um, I want to go back to the Bears game for just one moment, which is, I will say this. This is the, if we're going to have a new rivalry with them, which I do think is very, very, very possible because, you know, look what happened. Boy, it's the best way to get this started. Chapter one was that they were chippy. They got McLaurin pissed off. <laughs> there were, they're practically getting into fights. They do a really dumb thing. So I'm hoping Tyreek Stevenson's on the team next time we play them, just so we could point it out constantly. They did a number of dumb things that backfired on them. Jaden was amazing again. It, it ends in a Hail Mary. Chapter one, wah, perfect. Perfect if we're going to start a new rivalry. No, I agree 100%. And, uh, you know, there's a part of me, too, that's now going, all right, I think we play – I want to say we play the North next year, don't we? I'm pretty sure we do because we didn't play them last year. We didn't play them this year. I feel like 2021 was yeah. NFC South this year. Right. We played who did we play last year? NFC West, because we went out, we went out west. Yep. A couple right. times. We went to, exactly. we went to uh right. So yes. So next mm -hmm. year we get them no matter what. And yep. what I love about this too is they're not gonna meet in the playoffs yet, but like you win the next one and you win in another dramatic fashion. That fan base and that franchise, we've been that that franchise before. It's gonna get freaky on them too. Like like it's gonna get it's gonna get weird on them if we somehow meet them in the playoffs and it's gonna be like, oh god, not them again. Like that's that's what I want. It could us be to like become. this could be an eight steps ahead though. One Pat Mahomes has won a lot of Super Bowls and Joe Burrow keeps beating them in Arrowhead, so it could be one of those weird ones. Either way, it could go either way. Yeah, so like yeah. we'll see. Right. All right, uh, let's see. We get the Giants next. Uh, saw them last night, Monday Night Football loss. Um, they pulled the what Oregon did last night and threw a 12th man on the field late on purpose to give Pittsburgh a first down. Everybody was oohing and on about that, but, you know, he stole that from Dan Landing up in Oregon because I saw him do that against Ohio State. I remember pointing it out here. I went, that was pretty good. Like, that was a good move. That's a loophole that both – you know, sports are going to have to close, obviously. But they used it. They got it. Your boy Dimes is just... Definitely I not mean, my boy. <laughs> I shouldn't say anything because his record against us is amazing. But, like, he's a liability. I mean, he, re he really is. Like, he's late on throws. The, the You know, at the end of the game, when you need a play, he airmails a ball that's picked off. He's He, he almost got lucky and it didn't. He bobbled it so much he didn't. Uh, the turnovers are killers for them. Um Boy, were they just going on and on about this draft class that the Giants have? And I looked at them and I went, really? Like, you think that that's – who do you see here that you're like, Tyrone Tracy's going to turn their team around? Like, what are, you, what are you talking about? They were going on and I – almost like they were just trying to, like, sell the package for the Giants because they've been hitting over the head. Their record is what their record is. Their offensive line's a mess. Um, Dexter Lawrence is awesome. Brian Burns is awesome. They do play hard. They're very competitive. But, I mean, here's hoping to 7-2 and two, if that's what we're going to get. If that's the quarterback play we're going to get out of them, then I think we got a real good shot to beat them again. No, I think this is one where, you know, if you're a Giants fan, don't get complacent, as in keep Dayball. They played hard. They played them very close, you know. Like, with how bad Jones is, actually, he's worse than I thought he would be. I really was actually, like, I was kind of high on him having, like, a Tannehill season where, like, he would be fine, and he hasn't. He's been awful. And the fact that Dayball has kind of kept them afloat is impressive. So they're going to go and get their quarterback next offseason and, and roll the dice again. And I have no doubts that they're going to be at least competitive. They are not it this year with, with Jones, though. He is, he's got to ask Dion. Does Dion want his son to play in New York? Because remember, didn't he say there's only a few places I want my guys to go? Yep. Yep. It he was here. To play there. One of them was here that he said that he trusted. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to you about that Travis Hunter guy, but uh, we're good yeah. otherwise. Yeah, exactly. Travis Hunter, by the way, did something the other day. He had a crazy game again. I was watching. He did something in the game against Cincinnati that if he ever tries to do in the NFL, it will it, it will it will look like what the Bears guy did on the goal line. He did one of those things where he came off the line really slowly, like two faux steps, and then ran by this dude. Good luck doing that against Jalen Ramsey. Yep, exactly. It will, never work and then they will show it and then the get up crew will kill you over it <laughs> right but travis 
piece of professional advice. Don't even pretend to bring that to the NFL. It will not work. Like ever will that work. Plus, anyway. not, to, not to mention the NFL, they're going to catch up to them too. So that'll happen too. My latest favorite thing with the Cowboys is uh, Trayvon Diggs loses it on a reporter before he even gets in the locker room, came out of the locker room after they lost to confront a reporter about an in-game tweet that seemingly questioned his effort on a catch by George Kittle. I, we can't. I mean, These guys are done too. They're another one. That operation, they've lost it. They, they've just, they've lost every week. It's something like this now with them. You can't make it up. Like, like, like it, it, I saw this and I was like, he did what? Because the reporter yeah. tweeted what? It, like, it wasn't even an overly critical tweet. It was just, what is he doing here? That's all. That's all it was. And yes. I just couldn't believe. Diggs knowing he plays for the Cowboys, he's got to have some awareness to just eat that opinion. Like, I'm sorry. You know it's going to go crazy the second you go out there and then confront him. And then what he said to the reporter, it was like, guy, what are you yeah. doing? You're an NFL what are you doing? player. You don't need to drop that on a reporter. <laughs> They're next for Falcons, Eagles, Texans, Commanders. Bye. They're three and four. Good luck with that. Good luck with Good that. Good luck with that. Right, good luck with that. So they've unraveled. That's wonderful. Chicago is on the verge of it. They got a chance to right themselves because they get Arizona and New England. They could win those two. Their schedule gets really hard after that, but they could. They lose that Arizona game. Arizona's like got a shot at their division now because of the way things are going on here. So who knows? They just won in Miami. Who knows? They've been tough. They already beat the Niners once this year. Like They're tough this year. So that's, that's, no, that's no gimme for them. No, Arizona is uh, a coin flip every week. Like, I, I stay away from them. If you look at the games, you don't know what version of them you're going to get. And they could, like, they can hang with anybody, except you just, don't know, you just don't know what version of them you're going to get week to week. So, yeah, it's their coin flip. Your boy, take the bus. He might be looking at Caleb and that offense going, I might, I might get him. So, we'll see. Uh, yeah. Let's see. A couple quick things. Uh, might be a Dodger sweep tonight. We'll see. I did think until we had our moment, the Freddie Freeman thing was incredible. <laughs> topped you. That was like, we topped you for yep. incredible, incredible sports moments. But the walk Mookie bets to get to Freddie Freeman first pitch grand slam. Oh, I mean, that's, that's the best of sports. You can hate the teams that are in it because they, you know, they're so expensive and all that stuff. But come on, you didn't jump off the couch on that one. That was amazing. That was amazing. No, and I know it's like the right baseball play because second and third got, you know, stolen and taken, and then you want to just load the bases because first base is open. But to go to Freeman, who has been nails in the uh, postseason in the past, he isn't what he once was, but he's still that guy. Just ridiculous for them to do. And, you know, I'm going to get my joy either way out of this one. Like, either the Dodgers blow a 3-0 lead or the Yankees lose. Like, this is I'll be fine with the reaction on, on either yeah. side here. But uh, to your point, too, about them both being expensive, no, this is what I want. I want expensive teams in the World Series because they spend money. You need to spend money, too, yeah. at every other team in the league. Like, this is what I actually want. I don't want a money ball team Listen, making it far anymore. I like – I love the Cinderella's in the NCAA tournament until we get to the Final Four, yeah. and then I want the behemoths. Right. I don't want Sister Jean at the Final Four. Sorry, I don't. Because I know it's going to happen to Sister Jean's team. Like, yes. it's all fun when they take somebody out. That's fun. Uh, exactly. All right, last thing. Uh, what do you got tonight? Caps, Rangers. Caps, Rangers. Caps have had a couple days off here. Uh, they're at home. They've been very good at home. Uh, they only lost that first game so far. Uh, I expect a low-scoring one here. Give me, like, a 3-2 Caps bounce-back win tonight. I think oh. they, they think they play well. They're also going to tweak the third line probably a little bit today. I don't know. I haven't confirmed this, but... They called up Mike Scarbosa, who played pretty well last year in some spot work. Hendricks LaPierre has not started the season off well. So if there's a move that's going to be made tonight, it's probably going to be LaPierre gets scratched. Scarbosa enters into the lineup. Uh, we'll see if that makes a difference for the third line. Let's see. Giants lost on Monday Night Football. They get us next week. We get the Rangers tonight. World Series could end tonight. New York's having a rough one. All right, this, is a, this is an all-time week. And I'm hoping, you know, let's spread the magic. Hopefully... Joe, you get to call a goal right at the buzzer in the third period, Joe. It's, 
Uh, unfortunately, walk off on the Rangers tonight. How about unfortunately, that? Unfortunately, Craig and Joe not on the call prime time <sighs> game tonight. Oh, so, that's right, ESPN game. Seven thirty, seven thirty puck drop, which means okay. it's, a, it's a prime time game. <laughs> that always stinks when we don't get our guys. All right, Correct. all right, everybody. Talk to you tomorrow. Pray about the show. ESPN six thirty, the Sports Capital.